everyone, I'm Vincent Racaniello, and this is Virus Watch, the weekly video report on what's happening in the amazing world of viruses. Today on Virus Watch, I'll be talking about the first clinical trial of a Zika virus vaccine, Zika virus in the USA, and the Zika Olympics. I mean, the 2016 Olympic and Paralympic Games that are starting today, August 5th, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. On the last Virus Watch, I talked about a DNA vaccine against Zika virus that protects mice from infection, a similar vaccine developed by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases of the NIH here in the U.S. is now going to be tested in humans. The goal of this phase one clinical trial is to test the safety of the vaccine and its ability to generate an immune response against the virus. The study will involve 80 healthy volunteers between the ages of 18 and 35 years of age at three different sites in the U.S. The volunteers will be divided into four groups that receive two or three vaccinations at different times. The volunteers will be inoculated with DNA using a needle-free injector that pushes the fluid into the arm muscle. The DNA encodes two Zika virus proteins, PRM and E. For more information on a similar DNA vaccine and how it protects mice from infection, see the last episode of Virus Watch called a Zika virus vaccine. After vaccination, the volunteers will be followed to monitor their health and look for side effects or harmful reactions. Blood samples will also be taken at different times after immunization to determine if an immune response to Zika virus has taken place. The results of this trial are expected to be obtained by the end of 2016. If this DNA vaccine is safe and induces an immune response against Zika virus, it's likely that the next step, which is a phase two trial to determine if the vaccine protects against Zika virus infection, can be carried out early in 2017. The description of this Zika virus DNA vaccine on the NIH website also lists other Zika virus vaccines that are under development at NIAID. They're working on a self-amplifying RNA vaccine, a live attenuated vaccine, a whole particle inactivated vaccine, and a recombinant vaccine in which Zika virus proteins are produced via a vesicular stomatitis virus vector. A similar vaccine against Ebola virus was tested in humans in Africa last year and showed great promise. For more information on these different kinds of vaccines, see the last episode of Virus Watch. You can see that the NIH is putting a lot of effort into developing Zika virus vaccines, which will be used both here in the U.S. and around the world. It's not clear to me why Congress last month did not choose to provide additional funds for this and other important Zika virus research. Up until a short time ago, the only Zika virus infections in the U.S. were travel-related cases, over 1,800 as of August 3rd. In these cases, the individuals are infected in another country, and after coming to the U.S., they are then diagnosed with Zika virus infection. Now there's evidence that Zika virus has begun to spread in the United States. Fifteen cases of Zika virus infection have been identified in the Wynwood neighborhood of Miami. These infections were likely locally acquired because the infected individuals didn't travel to areas where Zika virus is circulating. The CDC has also concluded that none of the individuals acquired an infection by other means like sexual transmission. It seems likely that a traveler from one of the countries in which Zika virus is circulating went to Miami, we don't know who that is, probably in the middle of June. This person was then bitten by a mosquito. The mosquito takes a blood meal and at the same time picks up the virus. The infected mosquito then flies off and transmits Zika virus to others in the Wynwood area as it bites those individuals. It's going to be important to identify Zika virus in mosquitoes from the Wynwood, Miami area, which as of this recording, Friday, August 5th, has not yet uh, been accomplished. Will Zika virus spread further than Miami and how many cases will be involved? It's hard 
to predict what viruses will do, but we can learn from what we know about dengue virus, which is another flavy virus like Zika virus. Dengue virus is also spread by the same mosquito as Zika virus, Aedes aegypti, and there are millions of dengue virus infections every year around the world. There are also travel-related dengue virus infections in the U.S., but very few local transmissions and only in Florida and Texas. The last dengue outbreak in the U.S. was in Florida in 2013 and consisted of 22 cases. These cases were limited to Martin County and did not spread elsewhere. Based on the pattern of dengue virus transmission in the U.S., I would speculate that Zika virus will not spread beyond Miami and that the current outbreak will be limited. We'll see if I'm right or not in the coming weeks. Our last story is about the 2016 Summer Olympics, which begin tonight in Rio de Janeiro. Since the beginning of the Zika virus outbreak in Brazil last year, there's been a lot of talk about whether the Olympics should proceed. Some athletes have even said that they wouldn't participate in these games. The greatest threat of Zika virus is for the fetus of a pregnant woman. And athletes that participate in the Olympics are not likely to be pregnant. Those participating in or watching the Olympics could spread virus to others, including women who are pregnant. To all others, Zika virus infection is not a serious illness, at least most of the time. For this reason, the CDC has looked at the potential danger of spreading Zika virus from the 2016 Olympic and Paralympic Games to other countries. First, CDC notes that mosquito transmission of Zika virus during the Games is expected to be pretty low because August and September are winter months in Brazil and the cooler and drier air reduces mosquito populations. It doesn't eliminate them, of course, because it's still warm there, but it reduces them. CDC has also estimated that 19 countries that at this time don't report Zika virus at all have the right mosquitoes and environmental conditions to support circulation of the virus if it happened to be imported into those countries. For 15 of these 19 countries, travel to Rio during the games are not expected to increase the risk above the current air travel that already takes place right now. These four other countries will be represented only by 19 athletes and not many visitors to the games, so they are not really a risk of exporting virus elsewhere. In the end, there's no reason not to go to the games for any spectator or any athlete with, of course, the following restrictions put forth by the CDC. First, pregnant women, of course, should not travel to the games. Mosquito bites should be avoided while traveling and for three weeks after returning home. This includes the use of insect repellent, wearing long-sleeved shirts and pants. Measures should be taken to prevent sexual transmission during the games and eight weeks after travel. Couples who want to get pregnant after attending the games should wait eight weeks or in the case that the male partner is infected with Zika virus, six months, they have to wait for the infection to clear. That's Virus Watch for August 5th, 2016. For more in-depth discussions about viruses, check out our science show, This Week in Virology, at microbe.tv twiv. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and I'll see you next week.